Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, and um, thank you for your welcome. Really appreciate it. Uh, uh, this is the last but one of our blessed series. So there's one more after this one. And by way of explanation, uh, for those of you who are visiting today, um, blessed is, the primary, is, a, is a primary way in which we reach out to others. So you go B-L-E-S-S, I'll go into that in a moment. Uh, it's just a, pr a primary way in which we reach out to others. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. That's what he did. And uh, therefore his mission is our mission. So it's, um, I just want to get behind the, I just want to get behind the, this series and catch the real heart of the series. And it's really when Paul speaks to the church in Ephesus. And um, he says these words in Ephesus chapter 3. He, he's praying for these Christians. So imagine he's praying for you. And he says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the, the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the measure of Christ. You've got to admit that's some prayer, isn't it? Look, 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 look. here's the point. It's right. Power. And do you, it's the love of Christ. You know, the love of God is what we feed on the whole of our lives. It's not just a one-off moment. It's, it's a whole of our lives. His tender, mighty, irreversible unconditional love it, it's an ocean to wade in and swim in you'll need it all your life he prays that they would have supernatural power and this is the point of it it's to know how much God loves you that's the point to know how much God loves you because out of his love for you comes love for other people I um when I became a Christian, I very quickly went off the rails. And um, so a little bit like Luke chapter 15, I was the prodigal son. And in those four years, I did things I never dreamt I would dream, do, do. I had, I had boundaries. I had boundaries which I'd set in my life, and I crossed them. I crossed them many times. I was shocked with the things that... I did, and, uh, and, and it's just all the shame of it, which made it so difficult to come back to the Lord. And uh, when I came back to the Lord, just the love of God overwhelmed me. It just overwhelmed me. I mean, shockingly kind, shocking grace upon my life, shocking forgiveness upon my life. And, and, that, and that's not just a one-off thing, you know, because we we get disappointed with the way that we live our lives and the things we say and the things we do. And, and still the love of Christ just keeps coming to us. And I thought, I remember thinking at that time, I think, you know, if God could love me like this, he can love anyone. And so that's why we do this blessed series. It's, it's one of the primary ways in which we get to do this. And the, and the B up there it means begin with prayer. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. This is a really good starting point, isn't it? Begin with prayer. You know, we have a number of people we're regularly praying for. We've written them down on our, on our list here. You've got cards at the back. You can start today. Just because the series is finishing next week doesn't mean to say you can't start now. We just keep going with these. And you write people's names down. And the reason you write them down is because they're important to you. Let me tell you this, if they're important to you, they're more important to him. They're more important to the Lord. So begin with prayer. And um, L is for listen. Your ear is a great tool 
for showing love to people. It really is. Now, I, I'll share a little bit more about that later. And E is for eating. Lots of people I know uh, really love this part. Uh, Richard spoke about eat for Jesus. Uh, he would. And um, sharing meals, having coffees, uh, and coffee and cake with people. Do you know, it just, it's an atmosphere of openness. And you produce some really good conversations in times like that. Now, S, this today is S, the first S is for serve, because we've already done the second S. I won't go into that, but um, so we're doing serve today, and, and Greg shared on the second S, which is story, share your story. And uh, those have been the last two weeks. If you haven't heard it, you have missed something brilliant. So I encourage you, just get on it, because it was terrific. So we're going to Mark 7, 31, 36. If you have a Bible, always good to open it. Um, the words will come up on screen, but listen, this is an unusual healing, as you will hear. But it has some important principles that are particularly helpful for us to see. Nicola, you're going to read this passage. Thank you so much, Nicola. That's great. Thank you, Nicola. I told you it was unusual. And um, I just wouldn't want the responsibility, by the way, of anyone here believing that they have the ministry of spitting on people. Okay, so uh, let, let's just put that to the side. Okay, let's just put this, that one to the side. But there are some principles in this passage, and I, I want us to pick them up. Decapolis is an unusual place. It, the, the very name means ten cities. And... It's predominantly Gentile, and Gentile means non-Jewish. So it was perceived as a pagan nation, uh, region, pagan region. It was a place you didn't go. You just don't go there. It's somewhere to be avoided. But Jesus appears to me as if he is going there. You know, he, is, he seems very intentional about getting there. So that first verse, he went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee, and into the region of Decapolis. You, you feel, this man is, knows where, is he, where he's going. And all my points today begin with the letter P, except this one. This one begins with I, and it's really, very simple. It's be intentional. That's what I pick up from Jesus, he's absolutely intentional. Be intentional. You know, in regards to blessing um, people, I think we have to be intentional about it. You know, the, the Word of God says that we should be ambassadors for Christ. Well, an ambassador is a, somebody who represents a higher authority. Or, so we have uh, ambassadors for Britain and other places, and they represent the nation. And they represent the government. Well, we're ambassadors for Christ. We're representatives of the kingdom of God. That's, that's what we're called to do. And I make it my intention every day. So this is one of those familiar phrases to me, to be ambassador for Christ. I, I, in my beginning of my day, I, I'm asking the Lord that I would meet people and that I would see people and talk to people with the intention of being the love of God to people. It's, the, it's intentionality. An ambassador, by the way, is not just what you do. Actually, it's who you are. And it, it's, so that is my intention every day. And, and as some of you know, that we, we've had some building work done at our house. And one of the things we did right at the very beginning of this, we, we prayed. We prayed uh, regularly that all who came in and all the people who were who came in would be, uh, we would be a blessing to all of them. Intentional. 
Um, not that we would just have a good job done, and I, that would be helpful, but that we would be a blessing. And one of the guys came in, we heard, I tell you what, we heard stories from these people, and I thought, oh my goodness, the need of God for people. Anyway, this chap tells us, uh, he's, I think it's either the first or second morning he's there, and we're having a cup of tea with him, and he's talking to us, and then he opened up about some, I mean, I can only tell you, it was, a, it was just a dreadful, traumatic event that affected the whole of his family. Uh, it's too personal for me to go into it. I couldn't do that. And, I, and then it, it wasn't a place where you go, let me pray for you. You know, there are times to pray for people, but this, this wasn't the time. You know, you just, some of the times we just have to be there. You do realize that? We just have to be there. And then he says to me, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. He says, I haven't spoken to anybody about this for years. I thought, this is part of the grace of God to be able to be in, into people's lives at that depth. I'm just saying, let's be intentional about serving others. The Son of Man, Jesus said, came not to be served, but to serve others. My friends, Christians, you are ambassadors for Christ. Some people have a to-do list, don't they? And they start every morning. I've seen them do it. They start every morning and they got their to-do list and they're at one, two, three. These are the things they're going to do during the day. And uh, (laughs) if you're one of those, and I'm not asking you to show of hands here, but if you're one of those, put at the top of your list, be an ambassador for Christ. Just put it there. It's just intentional. It reminds you of who you are and what you're about. We're blessed to be a blessing. The last time we did this series, I recall that one of the ladies in the church um, spoke about being at her own place and she she felt she needed to go out. So she did, she went out. And and she went to the park and on the park there's this lady sitting on a bench and this lady's weeping. And she sits herself next to her and listens to her whole story and talks with her and prays with her. Wow, what a moment. You know, that's intentional. She felt the need, sensed the need to go. And she went. And, and there was this woman weeping. We have to be intentional, my friends. Jesus needed to go to Decapolis. You get that. So let's be intentional about sharing the love of Christ. Now, verse 32 says there's some... There, some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hands on them. So the first word, beginning with P, is proximity. So the vast majority of people who Jesus served were in close proximity. You know, they went near him, or right in front of him, or they were around him. Now, listen, we do this in our church because we live in a community, but we also do this Personally, you know, as a, first as a church, we serve our community. So, as you heard from our Gift Day video the other week, what struck me about that Gift Day video was we're serious about people. We're serious about those in this town who's, whose language and culture is different, and hence learning English. Do you know, if you've been in another place and you don't know the language, you really are on the margins. It's just a difficult place to be. So we have in, learning English for, uh, for women. And one of the person was uh, speaking to me. This is from another church. And he said, I think that's incredibly kind. I think that's incredibly kind. Reach out to our community. We're serious about coming alongside those who struggle with addictions. We want to give them value and, and worth. Because addictions don't do that. We want to give them value and worth and weekly meals and practical help. And we have this azalea reaching out to those women who are exploited by sex trafficking here in High Wycombe. We're serious about people. We're in this town for this town. But this series actually is primarily about you and me, who we meet personally. They are in our proximity. So I suspect that people on this list, there won't be necessarily strangers 
on the list. Although the last time I did a list, I had one, per- I had one unknown. Because you never know who you're going to meet, do you? So I just put unknown. I thought, I wonder if this is the unknown. You know, so you got moments. But by and large, they're people you know, family, friends, neighbors, work colleagues, the lady on the till, the person at the uh, 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 petrol station, fellow bus travelers, people that we, who are in our proximity every day, every week. It's very ordinary. You know, that's our mission statement, isn't it? Ordinary people changed by Jesus change the world. You don't get a Nobel Peace, a peace Prize, by the way, for, for loving your neighbor. But it's, it's where we start. People near you, right in front of you. This is who you serve. This is for all of us. That's why we're all involved. Next, there, a few weeks ago, I listened to Ellie speak on Listening, tell you, my friends, it is an absolute key. And the reason I'm reminding you again of this is that it's a prime way of loving people. Serve people by listening. It, it's, it speaks volumes. It's an immense kindness. It tells people you are interested in them. And occasionally you can ask them questions, not trying to interrupt them. But occasionally you can ask some questions and just, you just find out a little bit more. Time is, um, is precious in our culture. And that's why this, a time given to people listening, is so helpful. I thought about this when I, I recall when I, I became a Christian. And I thought about all the time that people gave to me. And I thought, oh my goodness me, that was a lot of time. You know, I had objections and I had questions and I had an attitude and all the rest of it. And they gave me time and great kindness. Listening is a big deal. Serve, serve by listening. You, know, you take a genuine interest in people. You know, busy, I don't know how many times you use that word, I'm busy, I'm busy, busy. It, it, it's often about me, my schedule, my time. Just a warning here. <laughs> Service, serving can seriously interrupt interrupt your schedule. It, it can interrupt your diary. It can interrupt your day. It can interrupt your life. And I'm praying God will give you many interruptions because that's what he does. And we think, I haven't got time for this. Oh, but these are people we're serving. So we so easily get absorbed with ourselves. Every person has a deep need to be heard. Every person has a deep need to be understood. Every person has a deep need to be listened to. How many times have we heard that? Nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. Everybody has a deep need. Proverbs 20 verse 5 says, A person's thoughts are like water in a deep well, but someone with insight can draw them out. Serving reminds us that we're in the company of others and it takes the spotlight of me. Opportunities will come to serve, to, to serve our neighbours will come and they'll, you know, they'll be right in front of you and, and you know, sometimes I think you'll miss it. But don't worry, God will serve up another one and he'll give you opportunities. And listen, serve people. No strings attached. No, oh, this will make a good story for my small group this week. Don't, don't do that. It's, it's about loving people. This is what Jesus did for us and does for us. We've been blessed to be a blessing. God will give you opportunities. And the second key word to highlight is perceptivity. I want you to notice what Jesus does with this man. Because he, he takes him aside. Perhaps the last place this man wants to be is in the middle of a crowd. I mean, how many times, I thought, how many times have people made fun of him? How many cheap jokes have there been at his expense? I mean, he can't speak very well and his ears don't work, but he has eyes and I suspect he's seen. He's seen people mimic him. 
Sometimes people can be so cruel. Crowds can be uncomfortable places to be. But to be the center of attention in a crowd, that's difficult. He probably prefers to be unnoticed. Blend into the background, neutral as possible. This could be his worst nightmare. What a kindness. And just, he just taking him away and giving him a bit of space, personal space, that this man would understand that he's not a spectacle for others, but esteemed and valued in his own right. Now that's perceptive. It's an important aspect of Steve. Covey in his book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People it's having this perceptivity is really important one day uh, many years ago we were in High Wycombe and I think we were in a a curtain shop I think and uh, uh, this lady at the counter was giving us a really hard time I mean stuff she was blunt she was hostile she was just I thought wow you know, how much business do you get here? You know, it's a really, really difficult time. And Des, that's my wife, she's, she's said to her, um, very innocently, so you have to realize it's not aggressive, just very innocently, she said, um, have I upset you? And it stopped the lady in her tracks. And then she started to talk about things that were going on and out of her life unraveled this, oh, it wasn't something of a bad day or a bad way. It was a bad season in life. And suddenly you understood her a lot more. We need to get underneath the surface of people and don't think you know everybody's story. You work with people every day, some of you. Don't think you know the whole of their story. Get to know them and serve perceptively. After that moment, that lady was a lot easier with us, a lot kinder. We just sort of broke all the barriers. Serve perceptively, serve personally. As for Jesus, putting his fingers in the man's ear, spitting, touching the man's tongue, I've got to admit, that's personal. I mean, I don't know if that's personal. I mean, whatever you say. Actually, that's not what stands out to me. It's the next bit in verse 34. He looked up to heaven with a deep sigh. Do you know, in the original language, the word sigh means a deep personal groan. And this is more than perception here. He feels the pain of this man's life personally. The word signifies more than a passing pity. You know, oh, that's, that's terrible. No, no, it's much more than this. There's a depth and compassion and feeling that literally comes from the gut. That's what it means. It comes from the gut. And so here we have Jesus groaning. That is pain of this man. I mean, it's just, it, it's perfect, unfiltered compassion. No reservation. Do you know, I think of myself and I, th- I think, my, my compassion, I, I know, it, it's limited. I, th- I sense that, I th- I th- my compassion is limited. And, and um, at times I, I think I, I feel even in certain situations a little bit reserved and uh, I'm not sure, I'm gonna, not sure I want to get involved in this. And, 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 and subsequently lacking, but not his. Now he enters into the depth of this man's life and he groans from his own depths in response to his brokenness. And this is our Jesus, my friends. Jesus is not some serving dispenser cranking out acts of kindness willy-nilly. He's not doing that. He personally feels the depths of this man's anguish as he looks up to heaven and says, be opened. Now, when people tell us their stories and their pain, we're invited into the depths of their lives that is personal. We don't have to have all the answers. Sometimes they just need you there. That's it. Just need you there. Jesus wants us to be there. On one particular occasion, 
of extreme concern for those of someone who was working at our house. And they were about to leave. And my wife touched him on the arm. And she said, can we pray for you? And he turned and said, I'd really like that. Now sometimes you get those opportunities. And that's not the first time she's done it right at the door. I know another occasion she touched, would you like us to pray for you? And we've, and it's not, we'll pray for you next week. No, it's there and then. It's just that moment. It's such a great privilege to pray for people. You're serving people in their vulnerability. It's a huge privilege. So serve with proximity, passivity, serve personally. And in that moment of serving, we see the power of God Released, as, as, uh, accessed powerfully. So ask one of the P's here. So if you get the opportunity and have the relationship to pray for people and know you can ask that question, do. Because you never know the things that they will experience when you pray for them. Why? Because you're bringing them to Jesus. And he's the one who does this stuff. It's not all about you. You're just the conduit. He'll do the stuff. He meets with them. We've offered people um, to pray for people on our list. And we, we did this four years ago. And we had things open up to us, people who had never asked us to pray. And uh, where there was a sort of no-go area. And since then, we've had people ask us to pray personally and also ask us to pray for a distance. And they're still doing it. They're still asking us to pray. It's a, it's a privilege to be praying into people's lives. So, pray, listen, eat, serve, story. And Mark then says, there some people brought to him a man. They brought him to Jesus. Jesus loves people. Who are you? Bringing to Jesus. That's intentionality, isn't it? And we all start with prayer. And I'm bringing this person to Jesus. It's a great place to start. Jesus loves people. So much so that he came among us. What for? To save people from their sin. All that shame and guilt that's defaced our lives. All the sin and injustice, despair of this world, all the cause of brokenness on him, on him, that you might have new life. Oh, what a gift. What a gift, my friends. Donald Minner, let me finish here on this story. He says, uh, he's an author and he writes about a soldier, a Navy SEAL on a covert operation to free some hostages. And the team flew in by helicopter and made their way to the compound and they stormed into the room where the hostages were kept. They'd been in prison there for months and the room was filthy, dark. And they, the hostages were all curled up in a corner and they were terrified. And when the soldiers came in, there was this gasp in the room. And then they heard them calling, they were calling to the prisoners, come, 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 come on, come on. And they told them they were Americans and they were here to rescue them. They wouldn't follow. They sat there with their eyes on the floor. They were absolutely hidden. They were in fear. They were not of a healthy mind, and they didn't believe the rescuers were really Americans. So the soldiers stood there not knowing what to do, and they couldn't possibly carry each one out. And then one of them took off his helmet, and he put down his weapon, and he went amongst one of the prisoners, and he lay down with him, so he could feel the touch of his body. And he softened his face and he got close and he put his arms around him. And then he was trying to show them, he's just one of them, just one of them. None of the prison guards would have done that. And he stayed there for a little while and then 
And then the hostages lifted up their eyes and they started to look at him. And at that moment said, follow me, follow me. And they did. One by one, they all stood and they followed, and they rescued. Will you follow me? Jesus is the one who comes close and is identified with us absolutely completely. His love, his humility, his sacrifices. Come on, follow me, follow me. My friends, this is our God. Why wouldn't we want to give this away to people? Amen? Amen. Thank you.